and not necessarily like a small little uh, four channel uh, audio mixer. I'm talking like an actual, this, again, this is if, one, if someone can afford it, an actual 600 to like a thousand dollar, like an iPad mixer, if you will. And the reason I say this is because once you put, once you plug in your, your controller into an actual soundboard, like something that's meant for, to, to amplify sound, um, not amplify sound, to, you know, like an actual mixer. Yeah. Aside from not a DJ mixer, when you actually plug into something like that, you actually realize how much more power your speakers have, how much more oomph your speakers have, if you will. So when you, when you have this external mixer, uh, yeah, you can you can work with your levels more, be it your vocals, be it your highs, your minutes, your lows. Uh, you, you can change frequencies in it, but also more importantly too, because you can carry an iPad around, and in, in, in that iPad it shows, um, you know, your levels for your audio and all that, and also your notes, any notes you have for the event. So I this, this is again, this is not something every DJ needs, but it's something that would make your sound. Uh, what amplifiers sound, make it sound 10 times better, make your sound system 10 times better, but also make your workflow easier at the event. That way, if you're like 100 feet away from the DJ booth, you don't need to run back to like right. bring down bring down microphones or nothing. You can, li- you can literally just talk right there, uh, put the music back up, uh, or you need to say something else, they tell you, hey, can you announce this and that? Uh, you know, uh, unmute, just say it mute it and then music is still playing in the background because you have everything in control from your um phone or your or your or your ipad or your i whatever yeah your 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 mobile device um so yeah that's something i i i don't think every dj needs but it helps um it helps mobile djs if they're in that in that um in that business um it makes their life easier as far as like what I guess what uh I don't I don't know I don't know what 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 every DJ needs and what you know what what was the question again what what every uh <laughs> all right so what what accessory you know every DJ should have or what accessory, accessory okay uh, all right so here's a simple one cable straps I I come from the audio visual world I um, hate when uh I hate when I see other DJs just pull out a Tupperware full of cables that are all like tangled up. Okay. Um, that that would ruin your cables very quick, especially if you're keeping them in in cold storage, or an environment that's not friendly to cables. Yeah, buy some buy some straps, man. Like keep your cables organized. Okay. Um, that again, that comes from the that comes from my audio visual background. Um, it's it's a pet peeve of mine, but it'll keep it'll make your life so much so much more organized. Uh, yeah, just some cable straps. Uh, what? Yeah, that, that that's a good answer. I think okay. yeah, some cable strips. That I, would. I think that's a that, perfect that answer. Your, <laughs> that would organize like, your. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I feel like a lot of DJs like uh, don't have the cable. I know when I I first started off, I was just like, yeah, I was like one of those guys that like threw the cables in the bag, and yeah, terrible. Oh no, yeah, your cable. I was embarrassed too, pulling them out. Like I would try to like pull them out underneath the table with the cloth over, so no one sees me doing it. Like that's how it's. Yeah, don't do it. Hey, hey, that, that's that's fine. It's just it's just you you know you want to take care of your cable. Those cables are expensive. Right. You want you want to take care of them. Like those are like what twenty five a pop, give or take. Right. And you're carry you're carrying at least I, I don't know most DJs carry at least minimum four to six XLR cables on the minimum, and that's like twenty five to forty five a piece. So yeah, just roll them up nicely and, and keep take care of them. That that's all. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Mm-hmm. How did you go about choosing the right speakers um uh years of uh experimentation and seeing what everyone uh used so when i when i when i started out when i first when i bought my first speaker i bought a a gemini and you know gemini used to get it used to get a lot of hate for being the the low quality speaker back in like the early 2000s and late 2010s or whatever um but that speaker lasted me for 15 years. Mm. Um, as much as much hate as it got, as much as as much hate as that brand got. But yeah, so I went from Gemini, and then I, I got into JBL. Um, I started using those for a little bit. Then I started doing AV work, and I got into QSC. Okay. And I started to, I started to see all these audio visual guys use QSCs just because those, you could throw those things down a a, a stairway and, and <laughs> stairway on it, and they still work okay. So yeah, the, the, that's kind of the go-to for a lot, a lot of um, uh, audio visual companies because it's still mid-tier sound. It's still yeah. mid-tier, 
it could take a beating, but it's also not top tier. And from there, that's that's from QSC. I I learned of RCF, and I've been an RCF user for the past uh, two years. And I don't plan on making everything I have RCF just because it's really expensive. But as far as my wedding setup, I'm sticking to RCF just because uh, it's it's amazing what those things can can, can achieve, especially with uh, external mixer to make to really make them pop, if you will.